So um, ever since I was a kid, uh, I, I'd wanted to be a police officer. Um, and growing up in New York City, I think, you know, a lot of kids, my, thank you, a lot of kids um, my age also, that was not a crazy thing. You know, friends wanted to be football players or doctors or astronauts. And then I graduated high school and went to college, and those same kids then wanted to be, like, head fund managers and dramaturgs and, uh, like, orthodontists for cats. Um, <laughs> And I still wanted to be a cop, right? I had this really eyes wide open idea about truth and justice and helping the people who can't help themselves and the good guys beating the bad guys, which is not really how it works. But um, with that sort of full head, I entered the New York City Police Academy right after I graduated college in 1999. And after seven grueling months, uh, was on the street uh, and assigned to the 28th Precinct, which is in Harlem. It's the smallest precinct in the city. And I uh, was paired up with my partner, Will. Now, if you uh, watch TV or movies, you would think that Will was either some sort of renegade, uh, like uh, shooting cop who uh, was about to kill me and drug deals gone bad, or um, some sort of Robert Duvalish, uh, like one week to go before he retires, like uh, forget everything you learned in the academy, kid, kind of thing. Um, in reality, Will was just a 23-year-old like me from Williamsburg, um, and uh, so, and so the reality is that there's the upside of working together when you're brand new is everything's really exciting, right? Everything is exciting. Uh, police chases and chasing people on foot and being in uniform and being in a police car is really exciting. Um, the downside is that you have no idea what the fuck you're doing, right? I mean, like everything is like brand new, right? So it takes like a conference every time you have something. Like we had a call for a woman who pulled a hair extension out of another woman's head and it's like, is that theft or assault, right? <laughs> Right? I mean, I don't fucking know. But anyway, so okay. So anyway, so uh, this dream team partnership, uh, we pulled together one very cold winter evening. Shortly after we came out, we got this call for a man possibly high on drugs. So we go to 116th Street, Lenox Avenue, and uh, it's freezing cold. And we get out of the car, and the only people on the block, it's like a, the block is dead. The only people on the block are, there's people on the steps of a church. Um, there's like some ushers and some pastors. And then there's this ginormous man, right? He's like 6'8", like 350 pounds, um, and he's wearing uh, shorts and sneakers, and that's it. Um, and he's sweating profusely. Um, so, now, um, I think he might be, oh, and the uh, church folks were like, that's the <laughs> Like, yes, thank you, Father, I, I have it from here. Like, it's okay, we're, I got it. Pretty clear, this is the guy. Um, so, um, so now, we I thought maybe he was on PCP. We hadn't had a lot of PCP cases, but um, we did have drug training for like an hour and a half on a Tuesday at the academy <laughs> where they show you pictures of what the drugs look like. And PCP is in a yellow vial. Uh, and the side effects are you get really hot and you take all your clothes off. Uh, you have superhuman strength. Um, check, check. And you have, uh, you're impervious to pain, right? And I thought at that moment, looking at this man, that a photo of a giant sort of like Andre the Giant guy with steam rising off him would have been much more illustrative of the danger of PCP than a picture of the yellow liquid. Um, so, okay, so uh, the first level of uh, force in the NYPD force continuum is uh, verbal commands. So here we go. <clears throat> uh, good evening, sir. Officer Campbell, 28th Precinct. Uh, listen, uh, I think you did some PCP. So um, what, what we got to do is we, we got to... Um, what ambulance is coming, we're gonna take you to the hospital, get you all checked out, not a problem. Um, I just need you to put your hands behind your back and we're gonna handcuff you. Um, you're not under arrest. No, 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 it's just for your protection and ours, right? So it's just something we gotta do, right? So how, how, is that gonna work or? And the guy was just like, ah! All right, okay, so Will and I step back. All right, so then he's like, oh. OC spray, right? Yes, right, okay, we have OC spray, right? Or pepper spray, oleosorin capsicum, right? So in the academy, the video that they showed us, this works like magic, right? They spray the guy, and the guy like drops like a ton of bricks, right? Okay, I can do this. Uh, pull out my pepper spray, shaking it. Sir, this is oleosorin capsicum spray. <laughs> I've never used those words again after this. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, please, uh, if you just put your hands behind your back, uh, I just gotta handcuff you. I don't wanna have to use this, it's very painful. So please just do that and uh, then we won't have any more problems. 
To which he responds, I'm going to eat your babies. <laughs> okay. Okay, not, not going well. Okay, so I spray this man, right, in a perfect T pattern, the Academy would be proud, across the forehead and down the bridge of the nose, right, getting into all the mucous membranes, right, the tear ducts, the mouth, the everywhere, right? And then he literally, I'll just do it, right, so he does this. Come get some, motherfucker! And this is not what happened in the video, I want to point out, at all. That video's bullshit. So I, I literally look at Will, and I'm like, we're going to die. And I go over the radio, and I'm like, uh, yeah, no, unit needs assistance, uh, 116 in Lenox, 116 in Lenox. And I put the radio down. And, you know, again, it's a small precinct. There are cops coming, I'm sure, you know, in maybe uh, two minutes, right? But I think, you know, the eyes of the church people watching me, right, that was the problem. I really felt that they were expecting something, like God was judging me. So that's where the whole I go high, you go low idea came out. And that was, okay, so yeah, so that was what we went with, which is not perhaps according to the, the book. But so we jumped on him, right? Um, and it was right after we jumped on him that I realized the first of three uh, lessons. Um, one is that he was way bigger than he actually looked. He was very, very strong. Number two is he was biting my neck very aggressively. Um, and, and number three is that he was super slippery, right? Very sweaty, right? There's no way that I was gonna get handcuffs on this guy. Like, that is not happening, right? So I'm just like hugging him and ro we're just rolling around 116th Street, just rolling around, right? And the people from the church are shouting encouragement, like, oh, try the left, try this, thank you, I, I got this. It may not look like it, but I have this, please. So we're rolling around, um, and I hear sirens coming and sirens and cars squealing and the doors swinging open and I hear footsteps and oh, this guy just lifts off me, right? Like it's perfect, right? And he gets taken over and they handcuff him and there's a guy sitting on him so it's okay, right? So now so I have to go because I've been mauled by a giant uh, guy uh, in Bitten. I have to go to St. Luke's Hospital. So I'm sitting in St. Luke's Hospital um, about to get my tetanus shot, which if you haven't gotten a tetanus shot, hurts worse than a giant man biting you in the neck. I want to point that out. And I was thinking back on the lessons I'd learned in the academy and how I'd used them in this call. And it was not the first time, but I realized that at that moment that I would have been probably better off watching the movie Police Academy than actually attending the New York City Police Academy. Thank you very much. That's my time.